Hello everyone, welcome to Jadam. In this video, we are going to show you the detailed procedure of making your own JS, the Jadam Sulfur. Manufacturing own JS and other mentioned inputs of farming is legal for almost every country in the world that follows the regulation of USDA Organic including South Korea. If you are not aware of farming, sulfur is one of widely used substances in farming for its great fungicide effect. Even if this solution is self-manufactured, its effect will never fall behind in comparison with any sulfur product or any related items in the market. This powerful natural fungicide has great effect on controlling almost all bacteria, viruses, and disease that can occur during farming. As we all know, sulfur is one of the toughest substances to melt with water. Because temperature of boiling water is maximum of 100 Celsius degree, but sulfur melts at 120 degrees. This means it is not water-soluble organic matter. You can melt sulfur with ordinary cooking oil, but soon after, it will turn into crystals. Therefore, for melting sulfur to make water soluble was one of the biggest challenge and to do that people needed big equipment with fire. But with many trials and fail, I was able to invent a new method to melt sulfur without external heating for the first time in the world. And to make ultra low cost agriculture go viral, I decided to disclose this technology without patenting it. So what you will need is 99.9% .9 pure sulfur, caustic soda, sea salt, phyllite powder, and red clay powder. And by combining all the ingredients with water can melt sulfur without using fire. The completed JS looks like attracted red. It can be a little dark, but that doesn't mean that you have failed. And the cost of making one liter is only 60 cents, which is very affordable price compared to ordinary finished product. One liter can be diluted in 500 liters of water for natural pesticide or as fungicide. I have also developed a variety of natural pesticides apart from jadam sulfur. You can find more information about other solutions in our book and in other videos in this channel. And also, we have listed those on our website. So, let's take a quick look at the manufacturing process. As you can see, it is very simple. The heat generated by caustic soda melts the sulfur 100%. In this way, you can easily make natural disinfectant by yourself. We recommend farmers to make their own inputs because it is actually very simple to make one. Once you make your own pesticide, you can save more than 95% of the input cost. And as we always say, Jadam natural pesticides are powerful enough to replace chemical pesticides. I personally advise farmers to be free themselves from expensive farming that relies on purchasing. And by making own microbial solution to liquid fertilizer and pesticide, I believe that farmers can be self-reliant and become a leader of own farming with given ultra low cost technology for upcoming future agriculture. The purity of complete JS is about 25%, which is very high concentrated sulfur contents compared to the marketed products. If you look at this table, none of these heavy metals were detected in the solution like zinc, copper, arsenic, lead, and cadmium. And some people said that sulfur should be regulated by law due to presence of arsenic. However, 99.9% .9 pure sulfur does not include any of compound mentioned above, including any chemical pesticide residue. Therefore, there is no need for such legislation to regulate sulfur. In South Korea, we have something called PLS, the Positive List System for Safe Agriculture Substance and Product Use. And Jadam Sulfur is one of the most preferred solutions in between farmers. As I explained before, the Jadam Sulfur can control most of viruses and disease that can occur during agriculture. Another feature is that it does not build resistance even if it's sprayed often. And unique part of all is that it can also be mixed with chemical pesticides which makes Jadam Sulfur even more special. It also means all the fungicide you've used until now can be replaced with JS. The function of JS is not only limited to fungicide but also it can be great nutrition. Moreover, it is great color and sugar content promoter. As I previously explained in the lecture video, the JS and JWA, the Jadam wetting agent must be mixed together to see its synergistic effect. If you calculate the cost for aphid and my solution, it will only cost about $3 for using with 500 liters. For powdery mildew and downy mildew, $3.3 is enough for diluting in 500 liters of water for use. So with all this solution, the cost of pesticide can be reduced more than 95%. And with simple combination of JS, JWA, and JHS, 
Treating powdery mildew will be no longer an issue including downy mildew. So in my case, with all the combination mentioned above enabled me to grow cucumber in the open field with no hassle. Leaf fungus on tomato is also known to be very difficult but it can be controlled easily as well. Including leaf blight. Furthermore, it can also treat rice bacana disease which is very common problem for rice farming. Anthracnose caused on pepper is not a big deal as well. And it's also very effective against pure black, red and bacterial shot hole. Apart from the issue caused by the disease or bacteria, if you see the picture of my farm, everything is satisfyingly packed without any empty spot. It is very common to have damaged seedling due to the soil contamination and the pest. And here is a solution for that. Mixing little amount of JS within the mixture that you are going to irrigate or spray, the small quantity of JS will soak into the soil which will prevent damage coming from cutworms and onion maggots. But if you do it too often, there are going to be another problem. The soil will harden, which is not a good sign for farmers. The whole market advertises irrigating sulfur as mandatory for agriculture, but please don't fall into that. If excessive amount of sulfur accumulates in the soil, it will inhibit is the activity of microorganism. So do think about balance of everything before you are going to put anything into the soil because you will not be able to take it back again after. Apart from all that, another great function of JS I got to know is that coating JS on the bottom surface of the box will increase the shelf life of the packaged fruit. It is also very effective against termites in the trees. Use of JS is not only limited for agriculture, it can also be useful for human. Using 10 times diluted JS for Atlas food will show great improvement on the soil and it is also very helpful for any minor skin diseases. 20 times dilution for those who have a sensitive skin. So from now on let's watch the whole process of making JS. It will take about 30 minutes. Hi, my name is Yong Sang Cho, the founder of Jadam. Today, I'll show you how to make JS, the Jadam Sulfur. First of all, this whole procedure will be dealing with very hot temperatures, so make sure to wear protective gloves, glass, and a mask for the gas created by the heat. And please, do not proceed this operation while wearing sleepers. You might burn your skin off if things go wrong. Right now, I'm wearing glasses for the interview. The first ingredient you will need is 25 kilograms of sulfur, and 20 kilograms of caustic soda. If you buy a bulk amount of caustic soda, it usually sold in 25 kilo. So don't just add everything, weight accurately and remove the five kilo before using it. You will fail if you miss the calculation. Next, here is a sea salt, red clay powder and phyllite powder. If you're not living in South Korea, it might be hard for you to get red clay powder and phyllite powder. And those two ingredients are optional for more minerals in the solution. You can still make JS even if you don't have those two ingredients. But if you still want to add them, then replace red clay powder with fine soil and phyllite powder with fine stone or rock powder. So let's begin. This is a 110 liters polyethylene plastic batter with lead on it, also known as PE batter. And the height of the bucket is about 63 cm. There are 100 liters size better, but I do not recommend that size because it might overflow during the process. And to make this procedure smooth, you'd want to prepare two batters. First one for melting procedure and the second batter for additional water that you are going to add next. One thing to note is that you should never ever use black rubber or dark red recycling bin, at least in South Korea because those are very weak in heat so eventually the batter will melt from the bottom please do use heat resistant one like this so when you are done preparing to add another 50 liters of water on one side to ease the process 50 liters of water is equivalent to 50 kilos in weight so please be sure about the amount if you missed the calculation the whole thing might overflow or start to boil intensely Another thing to note is that during summer, temperature usually exceeds about 27 Celsius degree. In that case, procedure might get affected by the hot climate and start to overflow. Therefore, you'll need about 53 liters of water ready with you to prevent intense boiling and when temperature drops, come back to 50 liters. Before adding all the ingredients, there is one more thing that you should keep in mind. Do not change the sequence. Otherwise, you will fail or worst case scenario, you are going to harm yourself. 
So please, follow my step. First, I will untie the package to add pure sulfur, and one person should hold the bucket to prevent moving, and make sure to pour over with the package bottom touched so that you can prevent dust coming out from it. Then slowly remove the plastic, After that, add 500 grams of red clay powder. Then I will add another 500 grams of phyllite powder. It becomes mineral rich sulfur with these two elements when melted during high temperature. Then I will add another minerals, the sea salt. I'll put about 1.5 kilos of this. If you add this tree, it is not only rich in minerals, at the same time, just by settling it, it makes the end result of the sulfur very clean and clear without purification process. Next, I'll add caustic soda. This is also covered with plastic. Please do not untie this with bare hands. You may burn your skin if you make a contact with this substance. Now all the ingredients are in place, the batter is filled about two-thirds. You may be worried at this point that it won't melt, but now you are about to witness the whole process. Now I will add 50 liters of water that previously prepared in advance next to me. Do not add water little by little, you will fail if you do that. Pour all the water at once. There will be some dust and little gas during the process, so do this procedure in an open space and please do wear a mask. I advise to do this workshop inside during winter season due to its cold wind and low temperature, but make sure to open all the windows and doors. Now I will stir it. The most suitable tool is wooden stick rather than aluminum or any metal sticks unless it's stainless steel. All thing with metal will get rusted and might affect the end result when it is contacted with the caustic soda and sulfur. If you can't get this wooden stick, then you can also use thick long wood branch. The stick should be about twice the size of the bucket for the ease of operation. So let's do it slowly now. Insert it deep and even towards the bottom. Do it slowly so that there is nothing left on the edge. Fill the stick, touch the bottom. As you can see now, the ingredients begun to mix with water and the temperature starts to rise and current temperature is about 55 Celsius degree. And as the heat goes up, the sulfur itself begins to melt. The temperature went a little more, which is now about 83 Celsius degree. Do not rush, do it slowly.
Some people try to use a drill to speed up during the beginning of the process, but do not use it from the first stage. If you set amount correctly, it will melt anyway at the end and the result would be satisfying. So if the quantity of the water is not correct and you put lesser than 50 liters, it can boil over and it's dangerous. It won't melt if the water is more than 50 liters and check the floor once and the temperature right now is getting higher. Now I can see the sulfur is turning into liquid. Make sure to stir underneath so that there is nothing left in the bottom. It is now stable, right? This is normal. If it's boiling due to hot weather, just prepare a little bit of water as a spare of one liter next to you and pour it when it's boiling. It is just like pouring extra water to stop hot water from boiling it. Now the temperature is close to 100 Celsius degree. Steer slow, continue this action while it is still in high heat. Because when the heat drops, a whole particle of sulfur will no longer melt. Steer slowly and evenly. It has been lesser than 10 minutes since we started working and within 10 minutes now we can see that it's almost melted. Even if you steer slowly, it will still melt quickly. So don't be in a rush, it will still melt. As you can see, it melted a lot and let's do some more. Use the liquid of the sulfur to flow down the rest of the sulfur on the wall. Pour with the liquefied sulfur to wash the things that are attached on the wall. Then the sulfur will melt away. a little more when there's still heat remains and the current temperature is 96 celsius degree the temperature is supposed to be over 120 celsius degree but i think there is an error in the thermometer and i think it's almost over now lastly i'll check if there's anything left on the floor and it feels like there's not much of sulfur left on the floor now steer it slowly and steady while I have a heat here. And if you want to speed up your process, it is also possible to mash sulfur with using stainless steel mash. Seems it melted a lot right now and put the stick to the bottom to see if there's any sulfur left and I can see there's a little bit left right there. You can also make a whirlpool to accelerate the process while temperature is dropping at the last stage. As you can see, it's almost melted right now and it's been only 13 minutes since the beginning. 
Let me stir a little more to make sure it is clear. While making whirlpool, use a counter current of the water to increase friction in between leftover particles to melt faster. It's almost complete right now. Um, there are some people who add hot water instead of cold one when it's boiling because we didn't remind them in the beginning. But please do not add hot one, it will overflow as I told you before. You must use cold water between 15 to 20 celsius degree. I've started to stir constantly and it's been about 20 minutes and you have to check it again if there is any sulfur left underneath. It's almost melted right now and I will stir a little bit. Proceed the operation until the sulfur is completely liquefied. Now we have changed our thermometer and we can see that it's a higher temperature and after 25 minutes of process the temperature is 94 celsius degree. With this number I can assume the temperature was higher during the peak procedure. It's been about 30 minutes at this point using wooden stick would be time consuming so I'll be using electric drill to accelerate. But as I mentioned before, using drill is not recommended. It is still very dangerous to use at this temperature. You can use it, but do it during end of the process. When 70% of the work is done and the temperature has dropped a little bit, then you can save about 10 minutes. It is very dangerous if you use it from the first stage. So use it when almost all sulfur has become liquefied and make sure to use a clean one. If not, just simply use the wooden stick. It takes about 30 minutes to complete. After use of the drill, the drill blade should be wiped up very clean, especially when you are going to make JWA after making JS. Any sulfur on the blade will completely ruin the whole process when you are going to make JWA. So make sure to clean it all up for the next use. It is all complete as a final confirmation. Slowly take the wooden stick to put it in the bottom. Check if there is any sulfur left or not. You can see it's almost complete. This whole thing is done with adding 50 liters of water. <laughs> this liquefied sulfur is about 40% pure. It is almost half water, half sulfur. If you evaporate the water, the sulfur content will increase, of course. But unfortunately, if you leave high concentration of liquefied sulfur exposed to the lower temperature, the sulfur will become crystallized underneath. And to prevent that, rather than melting it again, I will add more water. In order to make no crystals, I'll fill it with 32 liters of water to make 100 liters. And if you have added 53 liters of water due to hot climate, then subtract 3 liters from 32 liters, which is 29 liters. In case of JWA, the quality of the water determines the whole process. However, in case of JS, soft water is not so necessary, so you shouldn't be worried about the quality of the water. If you set it to approximately 32 liters, leave only 3 centimeters from the water in the bucket. It's a bit short right now, but be careful when adding water. Look at the line here. There are people who misunderstand and only pour until that line. If, if you look at here, there is about 10 centimeters gap from the end. The water should be filled until there is 3 centimeters left. In case of a foreign audience, we are not that aware of the shape of the bucket in every country, so make sure to measure the amount and weight 
correctly so that you won't mess anything. It's almost overflowing. It is about 3 centimeters. This is total of 100 liters of solution after adding the water. And finally, I'll stir slowly to make sure if there is anything left and to mix water and high concentration of sulfur very well. The whole process took me about 35 minutes to 30 minutes. This is the 100 liters of JS 35 minutes after completion. The color is black because of red clay powder and phyllite powder floating around and there's nothing wrong with it. This is just within the process. Now I will settle this for about 24 hours so that the sediment floating above settle and the color will change into beautiful red. After all this, we are not going to let this settle with the lid open. If it contacts with air, there are going to be a sediment coating on the surface. So to prevent that, there's a perfect size lid that fits here and I'm gonna put some weight to make sure it is airtight. We were working again, we are back again to our office and I have settled this sulfur solution for about 24 hours. So let's check the current status. It looks much cleaner, so we'll check how is the color when we got it from the beaker. It looks beautiful red, isn't it? If we compare this to the yesterday one, it is actually pretty much the same. While pouring into another container, do not stir it, just slowly take from the above. If you put it in the thin plastic bottle like this, there might be a chance of leakage. So use the thick bottles or you can use the plastic container as you see here. There are people who often store in the bucket like this, but if you use it without storing into the another container, it may contact with the air and create thin white layer of oak. If you leave it like this, the upper and the lower sulfur concentration may change. So the top will become thinner and less concentrated and as it goes down, sulfur will be concentrated at the bottom and soon will become crystallized since it is heavier than water. And to prevent such problem after 24 hours, put it in a separate container. So in this way, you can have 25% pure liquefied sulfur. Do not stir or shake the solution and just gently scoop it up to pour into the other container. stored about 40 liters of JS right now and it is still very clear. And here is the 60 liters. Till now is very clear and transparent. Now I'll try to add it into fourth container and do it slowly, otherwise the old the thick layer of the sulfur will just follow up. If you look at this all four, it's all clear, it's total 80 liters, so we've got 80 liters of clear JS out of 100 liters. And the bottom part of the JS is usually darker and it is the sediment from the phyllite powder and the red clay powder 
Put the rest of 20 liters of darker solution in a separate container and just leave the darker one for a few days it will settle completely and it will become clear red on the top like that. We now have collected all the 100 liters of JS and uh, under beneath there's this little darker thing but that's the sediment. There is no sulfur left over. This container contains all the darker solution, the rest of the 20 liters. And if you keep it for a few days, as I mentioned before, the top layer of the solution will turn into red. So when you are going to use it, just use the top layer of the solution. Now everything is completed. We now have 80 liters of clear JS out of 100 liters and 20 liters of darker one which need more time to settle. Make sure to mark on the container so that you won't mistakenly use it. So now I will close all the lid and make airtight. When storing in winter, it doesn't really freeze. It might freeze in minus 5 to minus 10 degrees if you have kept it outside for a few days. Store it in a warehouse or try to avoid sunlight. Even if it freezes, it can be melted again. So there is no big problem to use it later. The leftover sediments are not sulfur. It melted clean. So when whole procedure has done correctly in hot temperature, there are going to be less of these left in the bucket. However, if you do it in a colder climate or lower temperature, there might be more sediment left over compared to the procedure done in hot climate. So make sure to steer slowly and steady. So this is the complete JS after 24 hours of precipitation. This whole 100 liters of making JS will only cost about $50. So this one liter cost about 50 cents. I usually use half liter to two liters to dilute in 500 liters. I mentioned in the beginning of the video that this is used as disinfectant and the cost is significantly lesser than ordinary disinfectant in the market. This JS is actually very attractive because believe it or not, there is no germs or disease that cannot be controlled. Method of using sulfur products are usually recommended with foliar spray and soil irrigation. However, we do not recommend irrigation because if you use it too often, then the soil will start to harden. Planting any crops in the hardened soil is not so wise action to do, isn't it? There are a few crops that need to be used with caution and those sensitive crops are grapes, persimmons, walnut, including any greenhouse crops. So it should be used accordingly based on the content that we have provided. And another one is from spring to autumn. It is not panacea for entire period. It is recommended to use for prevention of disease and for the moment of emergency. So you can use it twice in a row, but it is recommended to have one day interval before spraying it again. And this batter should be used particularly for making JS only. Because even if you washed properly, there can be minor defect if you make JWA in the same batter after finish making JS. So please keep that in mind. I hope I was able to show you the whole detailed procedure of making jadam sulfur. As you saw, with simple way and with few ingredients, it is possible to melt sulfur for agriculture use. And in the summer, the initial volume of the water is not 50 liters, it's 54 liters. Most of sulfur products in the market has few problems, which is damaging plastics and iron pipes. So it has been avoided for farmers who farm in the greenhouses, but JS does not damage both plastics and iron pipes. If you have been watching my YouTube videos, then you know that I use landscape fabric as alternative solution for plastic mulching. And that proves that JS does not damage the plastic. 
Even after five years of using same landscape fabric again and again, there is no such problem. There is a ratio chart of making JS in a lesser quantity, so please pause the video if you want to see the ratio or you can read all the details in an organic farming book which is now sold in Amazon. Starting ratio of JS in 500 liters are usually half liter, but you can increase the dosage depending on your needs which you have to decide accordingly depending on your condition. During emergency, the ratio can go up to 5 liters of JS in 500 liters. Once more, make sure to use PE heat resistant batter when you are going to make both JS and JWA. I want to remind you all again, all Jadam natural pesticide and fungicides are powerful enough to replace chemical pesticides. So after invention of Jadam sulfur manufacturing technology, the word spread it mouth to mouth in between farmers across the country, and that became huge crisis that we had to face. In 2012, the Agriculture Department of South Korea illegalized the use of Jadam sulfur. Authorities started to disqualify organic farmers who had been using JS. In the meantime, the Department of Organic Agriculture was promoting farmers to use JS at the same time. The whole situation was very illogical, didn't make sense. I was informed that JS cannot be used for farming. And for two years, I had to fight to legalize Jadam Sulphur. And luckily, one day, Senator Sun Dong Kim helped us to get through these problems that we had. We went up to the parliamentary inspection to legalize Jadam Sulphur, and so we have succeeded making JS legal again. A few months later, I heard that fertilizer and pesticide companies made all up behind the curtain. Creating something and teaching for greater good is dangerous, and that to especially the part of pesticide in agriculture. I realized this small step of mine can be life-threatening to myself and to my family. But to tell the truth of this current social structure, I decided to release all the lecture videos which was my only income at the time, so this information can be stuffed on the internet forever. As this course was released, there was another second wave of struggle. People started to watching YouTube videos instead of participating in my lecture. It was a very hard decision to make and we had hell of struggle until present. This book that we have contains the whole information of true agriculture and all of my research. And another book is called 100 Herbs, introducing abundance of natural resources and poisonous flour that can be used as pesticide. Jadam's ultra low cost agriculture technology is not just limited to South Korea. It can be utilized in all the countries in the world. And to make people more approachable, we will keep on translating our contents in various languages. If you are willing to participate in our movement, then you can also purchase one of our book on Amazon for more detailed information. If you are satisfied with our videos, please click thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more interesting video. Thank you for watching.